Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's this morning. So glad to have you here with us today. A special welcome to any guests or visitors we may have with us. We are so glad to have you here with us and would love to speak with you after the service. Just a few quick announcements before we begin worship this morning. The first is that on Tuesday, the day before the inauguration, we are going to have two special services here at St. Paul's, services of scripture, prayer, and hymns for our nation. There will be two time slots, one at noon for a lunch hour time slot and another one at 5.30. Uh, Like so many things, registration is required, so if you'd like to uh, attend these services, I would uh, highly encourage you to register uh, as soon as you can. And again, that is noon and 5.30 on Tuesday. The second announcement I have is in two weeks from today, on Sunday the 31st, is the fourth installment of the Music at St. Paul's season, and this is a special presentation of art and song. And again, pre-registration is required, but it's a 4 p.m. concert, so again, if you'd like to attend that, I invite you to look at the good news or go on our website for more details and to register. And then the final announcement is that our middle school youth will have a special opportunity to play Christian Underground. I know that is a very popular game uh, around here. And so uh, if you or someone you know has a child in middle school and you think they'd be interested, again, I'd encourage you to go online uh, to find out the details or look in the good news for the registration information for that. With that, let us begin with our opening hymn.
please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose compassion never fails and who invites us to call upon you in prayer, hear the heartfelt confession of our sins and receive our humble supplications for your mercy. Spare us from the just punishment of sin which our Lord Jesus Christ has borne for us and enable us to serve you in holiness and purity of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for a day of supplication and prayer is from Joel chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his band, land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, 
I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a, a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 John, the first and second chapters. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, We make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteousness. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also." This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Today we deviate from our ordinary practice of the three-year lectionary cycle and instead focus on a day of prayer and supplication. A day of remembering that we can take our request, our prayers, our pleas to God and he hears our prayer. And the word of God for our meditation this morning comes from Psalm chapter 4. The response of Psalm, the Psalm of David, we read together earlier. We don't know the exact moment in David's life that he wrote this psalm. And we don't know the exact moment in the history of Israel, in the history of God's people, that necessitated his writing of the psalm. But we do know why he writes Psalm 4 with such urgency. As verse 6 tells us, he looks out and sees that there are many people who see the world and wonder, who will show us some good? In David's day, the people witnessed suffering, pain, injustice, the evils of life. And they were angry and frustrated. And they had gotten off track. In their desperation, in their anger, in their annoyance, in their frustrations... They began to seek after vain lies and empty promises. They had fundamentally forgotten from whom the good things of life truly come. They had put David and God's own honor to shame through their actions. They were caught seeking the alluring temptations of the world, seeking after empty promises and putting their trust in the people and in the things of the world above, before, and sometimes even against their trust in God. If we had to be honest, perhaps we can relate to that a little bit. As much as we hate to admit it, perhaps at some point in the last 10 months we could sympathize, if not openly echo, the attitude that the people of David's day seem to have. As much as we hate to admit it, there have probably been times we have been left wondering who will show us some good. Who's going to show us some good while this pandemic still rages and impacts our daily life? Who is going to show us some good when we're still waiting for those two weeks of restrictions to end? Who's going to show us some good when we turn on the news and what we see is hateful, unloving, unforgiving, or even just downright cruel rhetoric from those who are supposed to be our nation's leaders on both sides of the aisle? Who is going to show us some good when divisions creep into our relationships, our friendships, our families, and friendships are ended because of disagreements, debates over whether or not you should wear a mask and in what setting, and families cut one another off. Stop talking, stop communicating, stop caring for one another because they disagree on maybe who to vote for or even recently who won the election. We truly can find ourselves asking at times, who will show us some good? And it's okay to ask that question. David doesn't write the psalm to say you can never ask that question. And that you can never be angry, annoyed, frustrated at the things that happen in this world. In fact, he even says, be angry and do not sin. But rather, David writes Psalm 4 precisely because he has an answer to that question. David writes Psalm 4 because he knows God's word has a definitive answer to that question. Psalm 4 is a reminder of the thing that we should never forget, and yet it's the very thing that so often at the first sign of trial or tribulation, and certainly after 10 long, exhausting, tiring, annoying, sometimes even infuriating months, we too quickly and so often forget that as in David's day where the people sinned, their idolatry turned them away from God and to the world, we too can be tempted to do such things. And ask that question, who will show us some good? Psalm 4 begins with David's impassioned plea to the people. His impassioned plea to God, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. 
You have given me relief in my distress. Quite literally, I have been in a tight space and you have gotten me out of it. Be gracious to me, Lord, and hear my prayer. Rather than keeping looking for vain things of this world to put their trust in, David implores God's people to look to God. He reminds them that God has not forgotten you. God is not asleep at the wheel. God is not even ignoring you. But very truly, God still cares deeply for you. That God himself has set apart those who he calls to himself. And therefore, trust that no matter what's going on in the world, God does truly still hear our prayer. Hear our complaints. Hear our praises. Hear our pleas and hear our joys of thanksgiving. Trust not in the world, but trust in the Lord. Take your prayers to God and know that he hears you. That the problems we face in our life, in our world, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and even in our nation right now, we know we alone can't fix it. That we can't find true joy, true peace by looking to ourselves or looking at anything of this world, but rather by trusting in God, by trusting in who he is and what he does for us, by trusting in the one who truly is slow to anger in a world that is so quick to judge and to be angry and hateful towards one another, to take your prayers to the one who is merciful in a world that so often shows no mercy, to take your prayers to the one who in a dark, dark world there is truly in him no darkness at all. That is what David knew. That's why he pleaded with such passion when he wrote Psalm 4, answer me, O God of my righteousness. And so too today we can pray with such passion. We can pray trusting and knowing that God truly does hear us when we lift our request up to him. Sometimes in today's world, we're tempted to treat prayer as if it's just a sort of wishful thinking, that it's kind of just hoping that something might change, that there's no necessary real impact in our lives or the lives of those around us. And yet Psalm 4 reminds us that our prayers before God are not just wishful thinking, whimsical hopes, but very truly, God himself listens. Not because we pray so eloquently, not because we have any merit and deserve his attention, not because we have certain prayers memorized or even know all the time the right words to say, but rather because of God's great passion for us, God's great love for you, we know that God does listen when we pray to him, that he has truly lifted the light of his face to you, and that in the promises of the words and the actions of Christ, there is a joy and a peace that surpasses whatever craziness may be going on in your life, that is in the passion of Christ, the sufferings of Christ on your behalf, that you would know just how good God is, just how gracious God is. And you would have true joy and peace even in the sad, annoying, frustrating, even sometimes cruel moments of life. That it is the love God had for his people that leads David to write this psalm. It is the love God has for his people that leads David to say, you have given me a joy, O Lord, that surpasses any joy, any sort of material prosperity could ever hope to bring. It is in God's great love for his people that David reminds them that in the Lord you can lie down in peace and know you dwell securely. So that when things are crazy all around you, when things are uncertain, chaos abounds, you know where to look for some good. You know to whom you ought to turn to see some good in our life. And it is in him that you trust in him alone. And that when we turn to God, we don't do so out of some sort of compulsory obligation, but truly because he is the source of all goodness 
and mercy. And as we are about to turn to him in our prayers, as we're about to pray the litany, a prayer that is usually only reserved for times like Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, where perhaps we'll pray for some things that we haven't prayed for in a while, like our enemies, those who would slander us, those who would even speak ill of us. We remember the joy and the passion that David had when he said, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness, and trust that the Lord hears our prayer. That we would have the same earnest joy that David displays in Psalm 4. And that we'd have the same earnest peace that David displays in Psalm 4. Knowing that very truly, God in his mercy does hear our prayer. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, be gracious to us, be gracious to us, from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all our times of tribulation, in all our times of prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, We poor sinners implore you to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, including especially the international students of Concordia Seminary Graduate School, that your grace and mercy would be at the center of their ministry and that you would sustain them in holy living. to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, 
and to accompany your word and your grace and spirit. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our nation and all those who are or will be in authority, bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to give wisdom and strength to those battling this pandemic in our medical communities, comfort and peace to those who are sick or impacted by the virus, and to bring your comforting presence to those struggling with loneliness and isolation, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all parents with children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to set free those in oppression, and to have mercy on us all. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, for courage and constancy to treasure God's gift of holy marriage, that those brought, bought with a price and made temples of the Holy Spirit would be preserved in true chastity, the married in honorable faithfulness to one another, and the unmarried in honorable purity, glorifying God in their bodies, and for thanksgiving for the 56 years of marriage you have given Jim and Erica capes, let us pray to the Lord. For all people to cherish the gift of life, that we would rejoice in the gift of newborn life, especially that life which you have blessed Parker Ryan Wisman, son to Ryan and Allison Wisman, grandson to Ron and Julie Wisman, that as you have given Parker earthly life, you too would grant to him faith and eternal life in the promises of holy baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who stand in need of our prayers, especially Angie Dowell, who will have surgery, and Dan Keithley, who had and is recovering from surgery, that God would bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to every need. In thanksgiving for constant watch and merciful kindness, and then in every sorrow and every joy, God would not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of his kindness in Christ Jesus by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our nation, peace amongst our leaders, peace amongst our people, that the Almighty Lord, who does whatever seems good to him and from whom every lawful authority on earth comes, would uphold us in righteousness and health, that by your grace, O Lord, we would follow the example that Christ gave to us and love those with whom we disagree, love those who don't show love for us, and forgive others as we rely on God for our own forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, 
you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them also, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.